Guys, Shardimus Prime here doing another Diamond Select Toys action figure review. Today we're going to look at the Marvel Select Invisible Woman, which is a figure I picked up uh, about a month ago or something. I know a lot of people have already picked this up already. A lot of people have already talked about it, but I'm getting to this a little bit late and I've had her sitting here mint on card wanting to open it this whole time. Just have a lot of stuff going on, especially with the holidays. Anyway, you can see product shots over here. She looks great so far. There's a read up over there. If you want to read it, go ahead and pause it right now and then you know nothing on the side top or bottom so let's get to it and crack this thing open and if you're trying to get your marvel select figures you can do so big 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 get your big badass toys at bigbadtoystore.com click the link in the description below <laughs> and here's the invisible woman out of the packaging and i think this thing is freaking cool man I, I do really like this piece but i don't like every single thing about it i do have my complaints of course uh, but there are some things that I think, you know, that would stand out to anybody. I've had a couple of little QC issues here that bug me, but there's a lot I really do like about the figure. I mean, just the aesthetics, seeing her with her accessories like this is so freaking cool. Anyway, let's get a closer look at those accessories, and then we'll take a closer look at Invisible Woman. So here's all of the accessories, and it's so weird seeing Sue all ripped apart like that, but you can see we get the two sets of legs, we get the two sets of forearms over there, we get three sets of interchangeable hands for the Invisible Mode, and then three opaque hands right there, and then two different Invisa effects for her hands, and then one base right here which we'll talk about more in a second i do like the different interchangeable hands that we have here but unfortunately i did have a peg come out on one of them right here which does bum me out a bit I, i'm not gonna lie it, you know i'm gonna try to fix that it is fixable there's a way to work around it it's just the loop just got split and then i dropped it and then i just didn't want to waste an hour looking for it because i'm gonna have the figure displayed uh, with her power set being shown off so i do like that we have this and you can see we have this clear grabby hand right here and that's really for this effect piece right here which i thought was a pretty clever system so you get this orb go ahead and plug this into the forearm first which here we'll go ahead and do that right there so you can see that that has a hand and i do like how the forearms look so i'm kind of jumping all over the place over here and then here's the opaque forearm right there uh but yeah you can go ahead and wrap this in here and then you can see how that goes into the slot for the forearm right there and then grab the other side and make sure you're lining it up with that slot and then now we have her whole uh, hand right here covered by this orb which is really cool and i love this little pearlescent sheen that they gave it you know you can see how it's reflecting light like that i think that's pretty awesome uh, it's a little bit weird to you know have this on here first and then plug it into the forearm you know so far i've done it the other way around where i plug it in here first but hey that works too and then you can see the legs uh yeah we get the opaque legs right there and then we get these awesome translucent or semi-translucent legs which i think is really really cool so i do like that and then uh, we also have this cool invisa shield which is great uh, it has a hand there's no articulation right there but you can see how the hand is already sculpted into it and this is just a really dope looking shield again i like what they've done with the plastic here so that's very cool and then we have the base now she does have a stand she has a port in her back she won't levitate in the air uh, at all with this it's just not high enough i wish it was higher so that you could get that effect as you can see right here, it barely looks like she's hovering at all. So uh, you can just go ahead and take this off, put this aside. I find it to be fairly useless, but this looks really, really cool. I love this effect piece. It has two pegs sticking out. You get the hole for that stand. And I like that they kind of dip this down a little bit so that she's facing forward. These other little fushing invisible, you know, shield effects uh, won't get in the way. And man, it just looks really, really cool. I do like this quite a bit. Out of all the accessories, I don't know. I I'm leaning towards liking this one the most. I just really dig it, man. But I really also like this one too. <laughs> 
So here's looking at the Sioux Storm head sculpt, and I gotta say, I really like it. I don't know, it has that classic look to it. I do like the paint apps for the face, too. She looks really good, man. And I really like Fantastic Four number one. I just started my quest of reading every Fantastic Four issue. Uh, I started that with Avengers recently, so I'm only on issue number nine. I'm on issue 230-something with Amazing Spider-Man. Uh, so yeah, the, the Invisible Girl scene was like straight out of the Invisible Man movie. I thought it was awesome awesome how the Fantastic Four are basically introduced as universal monsters for the most part. I wish they added a little bit more of a saturated yellow to this. It looks like a dull kind of beige color with her hair. So I'm not the biggest fan of that color choice. Uh, but I do think the blue came out looking really good on this figure. Minor pink chippage right over there. You can see where it's slightly sloppy on that symbol over there. So, yeah, it could have been a little bit cleaner, but I do like the color of blue that we're seeing right here because it matches Mr. Fantastic very well. So, yeah, his four came out eh, just as shoddy as this one. So, at least it's consistent, but not bad, you know? That doesn't really bother me much. Now, I did add the translucent pieces on her left side. I actually used the wrong hand earlier when I was demonstrating, but yeah, you can see that over there. And then we have the opaque side right over here. There's the hole in the back. And I do like the shadowing effect that we see throughout on the figure. It does look pretty good. Then there's the back, a little bit of a little extra black paint splotch right there. The belt is sculpted. Uh, the four is all sculpted in there. And you can see how it fades into the translucent side right here and up there. I really like that a lot. So that's pretty cool. Uh, when you swap out the legs, uh, there are indicators. I didn't mention that earlier. So you can see the L on the inside, so it makes it easy. And you want to make sure you heat up the figure, man. Like. I just get scared of breaking the peg that goes across here in the crotch piece, and I just don't want to snap that. So, yeah, heat up the figure just makes it a bit easier. I wouldn't say it's as super mandatory as working with some other companies, but it's something you're definitely going to want to do to prevent any breakage. Oh, and I did have a little QC thing right here with the ankle. So I'll get into the articulation in a moment, but there was just an extra bit of plastic right here on the ankle, and I had to shave that off with an X-Acto knife. Bit irritating, but not the worst modification needed to get that ankle working. Now to go over the articulation, I think it's okay, especially for a Marvel Select, it's okay. Not great for a Marvel Select, not terrible for a Marvel Select. Uh, the head movement is a little restricted with the hair. I wish they used a little bit softer material, but you can move the head side to side and there's like, it wants to pivot pivots this way but not that way and she could br she can't really look up but she can look down a little bit right there uh, you have shoulder rotation that moves a full 360 you get the bicep swivel and then you have the single jointed elbow that does not quite meet 90 degrees and they rotate and then you also have forearm rotation due to the transformation and then wrist rotation and all the hands hinge up and down similar articulation or the same exact articulation on the other side of course uh, you have the diaphragm cut right there diaphragm pivot she crunches forward Actually, she shifts forward just a little bit, and then she crunches back. Then we get a waist cut, a little bit of gappage. You can see that if you crunch her back all the way. I have to point that out. Hips move outward very far, and then you can get the legs moving forward, back a tiny bit, upper thigh cut, and then you have the single jointed knee. And I really like how the blue matches very well on this side, because this is blue plastic, and this is the translucent clear plastic, but they painted it over. It just looks very consistent. I like that fade too. Anyway, we talked about that already. Yeah, we got the thigh cuts right there. You just want to watch those, make sure that they're pushed in all the way. And neither side will rotate at a full 90 right there or bend in at a full 90, but you get rotation. Then the ankles do move down. They do move up and she has beautiful ankle pivot. Well, on this clear side, it wasn't that beautiful, but we already went over that. Now to measure out this Marvel Select Invisible Woman, you can see that she is standing just a bit over seven inches tall. And for a size comparison, you can see we have some other Marvel female figures from Diamond Select Toys. We have Gamora and we have Psylocke. I wish they had done some of the things with the Psylocke figure on this Invisible Woman figure, like the double jointed elbows and the double jointed knees, that would have been nice. Then here's Invisible Woman next to another translucent figure. You know, they've just been crushing it, I think, with the translucent figures. There's a translucent leg. Ooh, so sexy. <laughs> it's not, but hey, I just thought they've been doing a great job with these translucent figures. Looks awesome. And then here's Invisible Woman next to the rest of the Fantastic Four. We have the Human Torch, Mr. Fantastic, and the Thing. And I hope 
that Diamond Select makes a new Marvel Select thing. This isn't terrible. Well, mine did break recently, which really sucks, but I still think that they could make a better upgraded thing, especially, you know, with the talent that they've had with the recent Hulk figures. Ah, oh, yeah, put that same talent behind a new Thing figure, that would be awesome. And then for an Invisible Woman comparison, you can see we have the Marvel Select version, and then this is the first Hasbro version, and then here is one of the more recent Invisible Woman. Well, not actually that recent. And I'm not sure if that's the correct head that's supposed to be on there. I wish this blue was closer to what we have over here. I think this is the best color blue. I like the shading on this one, but holy crap, man. Marvel Legends were so bad. This figure has way more articulation than this one. And then here's the Marvel Select Invisible Woman. Next to your average six-inch scale figure, we have the Marvel Legends Big Time Letdown Spider-Man. Yeah, just a question. Um, does it have to be, like, everything going invisible? Or could you just, like, make the clothes go invisible? Oh. So, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, feel free to show some love to the channel by simply clicking that like button. And if you're new here, hit that subscribe button. And also, check back on the channel every now and then. YouTube can play games with their YouTube authors. So, sometimes you gotta look us up. Don't forget your old boy Shardman Prime over here. Don't let the algorithm eat me alive, please. <laughs> click and click and click. Hey. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you made it all the way through this video, I am very grateful for you. Thank you so much. And I want to know what you think about this figure, but just to tell you once again, I really do like it a lot. I think it's a great piece. However, it does have some shortcomings. I did complain about it a little bit here and there. I gotta say, removing the forearms, that's my least favorite part of this. I wish they made the elbow removable instead. That would have been just a little bit easier to work with. If you could pop off that elbow joint instead because you have a joint and another joint so close to each other over there it just makes it scary popping off uh, the forearms and sometimes especially with the right leg on mine more so than the left i felt like it was just a stiff removal and stiff application getting it back on so you know swapping out the parts I don't recommend doing it often, you know, yeah, try out, you know, some different looks and everything, have some fun with photos, but as far as displaying goes, I'm going to stick with the translucent pieces, I wanted to have the invisible effects on there, and I think it looks really awesome that way, but anyway, uh, this wasn't a cheap figure by any means, I think it cost me about 35 bucks at my local comic shop, so yeah, at the price point of around 35 bucks, I am going to give this invisible woman a sud rating of, I love it! And I'd like to know what you guys think, so please let me know in the comment section below. If you want to see the latest in Marvel news, you can find it all over at MarvelousNews.com. And if you want to stay in touch with me on social media, you can find me on Instagram, Twitter, Twitch, TikTok, and on whatnot. And I will catch you guys later. Peace. That's crispy. Uh, you could go ahead and puck... <laughs> hey, I'm sure I Prime videos. Hey, you should click one. Yeah, click on one of them. Or subscribe if you haven't.